Hey there, welcome back. So I wanted to take the time to explain some of my choices uh, that I made in that last video. Basically, you know, why, why I chose GitHub Desktop, why I'm not using GameMaker's integrated source control tooling. And I wanted to keep this separate from that last one in part because uh, honestly, this might change in the future, GameMaker's implementation of how they do this. And I'll be honest, it's not like I've agonized over this choice, you know, like I don't have that strong a preference or recommendations for you. It really just came down to basically that I find it just easier to use the tools that I've highlighted before. And I I found um, GameMaker's way of doing things quite complicated, like setting up this stuff. So I, I'll, I'll link to this post if you want to give it a go. By all means... By all means do. Um, but yeah, I just, I found this really complicated. Like you have to deal with these SSH keys, whereas setting things up with GitHub desktop, I found really easy. You don't have to do any of that stuff. You don't have to be um, altering anything about the project itself, which you do if you are using the built-in stuff in GameMaker. Like you're, you're kind of forever changing some of the settings of this project, which makes things a little bit awkward for if you're trying to like transfer it. I found that quite difficult to even find resources on that kind of thing. Whereas setting up Git and GitHub arbitrarily for any project, there's tons of resources for that where using a, a, a GUI, a graphical user interface like this one. I also found that it just, it kind of didn't have as much functionality as a GUI. Like you can't, there there isn't a way to view all of our project's history at a glance or to see like what users do everything. And this goes for using a console as well. You can retrieve that information, but you, know, you just can't see it at a glance. I can't click on this and then, you know, look at some old code or something, which is quite important for me um, when I'm working on my projects. I sometimes like to see what I just did or what someone else just did and just review their changes and see if it's going to impact me. I love visuals, so I find it like quite important to have that there. And I also don't get those um, little alerts that I was talking about. Like having that update automatically has saved me a few times, especially working on a large project. I know that that one might not be particularly persuasive for those of you who aren't going to be working with other people, but that is a reason for me. I am working on a fairly large project with a team of four programmers and a few artists, and we all use GitHub and we all work on the project sometimes simultaneously and even using branches and some of the features we haven't discussed about and running into merge conflicts and having to resolve those. And while there are, I think, a few tools for that, um, a merge conflict can happen if like two people try to, I suppose, change the same thing and then you have to decide, because Git can't, it, it views both of those as valid, which one we're going to keep. So are we gonna use their one? Are we gonna use mine? Can we use both? But oftentimes that's just not good enough. Sometimes you actually want to keep some of another person's thing and also some of yours. So Git might have flagged something as changing the same thing, but it, you might know that it hasn't. And that's not enough to pull that apart. You actually need an external code editor. But again, I've just found the process of using external tools with a GUI easier than using GameMaker. Because if you have GameMaker open while you're trying to resolve a conflict, I've just run into a lot of bugs and crashes where I can't even open GameMaker or use any of the functionality because um, like even opening the project is causing a crash and just it's just a lot easier if those tools to manage stuff is is external. Um, in fact, I often have to close GameMaker entirely when I'm resolving conflicts like that or if I'm pulling in a big change and stuff like that. Another point I alluded to earlier is that the game maker stuff is kind of specific to game maker. It doesn't elucidate some of the functionality that is common to just using Git in general. Like, if I have to set up the project in this way, um, as it says up here, you know, like, is that how Git is normally used? You know, do I need to do all this stuff most of the time? If I'm going to try and, like, make a little tool, maybe you want to dip your toes into another language and, um, make something else and you also want to track changes on that, you know, are, are you learning stuff that's going to be helping you with that? And that's a hard line to tread because um, honestly, a lot of this stuff does translate, like understanding these keys, you know, it might be relevant to some projects. It might be important to have that stuff, but for me, I have not. And it was hard to pull apart uh, when I first started this, I remember, the stuff that I actually needed and the stuff that was kind of arbitrary. Uh, and I can kind of tell you now that I am trying to set aside a lot of the stuff that 
you don't necessarily need. Like, I think it's better to kind of like undershoot on that stuff and then add the stuff that you do need afterwards rather than just dive into this overwhelming um, spaghetti of, of new tools and words and stuff that you don't understand and, and it's hard to contextualize. Yeah, and just these um, these red ticks and green ticks, which kind of represent our tracked changes as they appear here for us in Game Maker, they were supposed to kind of represent whether you change something in your project. I found, I don't know, a bit distracting, uh, like a weird addition to the project. Uh, sometimes it's just hard to see at a glance what all of my changes are. You kind of have to be digging through this resource tree to actually see what you've changed. Although I think you can just like hop over to the commit message and it, it will come up. But still, I found it a bit confusing. This note actually right here is also another point. They have staging built in. Uh, which GitHub Desktop actually skips this step. So remember how we were talking about commits as committing a snapshot to your the history of your project, like taking all your changes and saving that as a snapshot. Git itself has another built-in step there, an intermediate step. So you're making your changes and you also have this staging change, the staging area where you kind of move those changes, Your it could be additions or deletions, you actually have to stage those first, move them to a staging area. And then when it comes time to commit things, you can review them and you can commit them. Now that might sound pretty weird given everything that we've talked about, you know, like what is the point of even having that step? Why is that there? And it's it's kind of hard to explain without experiencing this moment that I'm about to describe for yourself. But but sometimes, for example, you say that you, you're deep into a, a fairly complicated project. You've been working for several hours and making changes to very different areas of your code base. Say that you have a pretty rigorous system of collisions and then a uh, some separate scripts for how the player's jump works. And then another um, system for how blocks in your um, game move. And you are trying to update the player's jump. And in so doing, you've made a few changes to the collision code, which is in a completely different area. And even some of the blocks, again, in a completely different area. And um, you get to a point where as you're swapping between these, you're realizing that they're kind of, they could be organized into completely separate commits, but it was kind of hard to see that uh, when you started out. Staging might allow you to do that. So when you're reviewing all of your changes, you can put them into separate commits. Of course, it's not really the end of the world if you just commit the whole thing together and, and even just how difficult it would be to pull apart the bits that were to do with jumping and the bits that were to do with collisions and the bits that were to do with the blocks. So it really does depend on your workflow. This might be more important for like companies or projects that have rules about like what you can commit and how to bundle this together. For us and for me, it hasn't really been important. I've never really had the desire to go through the staging step and I certainly don't miss it using GitHub Desktop. And even when I've used other editors, I always basically just staged it and then immediately committed everything. So you can see perhaps why I didn't mention this before. It feels like a strange redundant step. And a lot of people feel that way. Like a lot of people love it. They love having the staging area and reviewing changes like that. And a lot of people have never used it like me. And GitHub Desktop itself certainly thought this step was redundant enough to not include in their interface. No doubt because um, they deliberately tried to make this as friendly as possible to use and tried to reduce the amount of redundancies and stuff that they thought that their target audience wouldn't really need. So on that note, while we're talking about GitHub Desktop and GameMaker, I want to just point to a few of the, the other graphical user interfaces that you could use instead of GitHub Desktop and instead of GitHub itself, so some different hosts that we could use. So we can actually go to Git itself and it does list these. So uh, if we head over to, I think, downloads, yeah, we can, um, there's a little section where they talk about GUI clients and you can see that right there is GitHub Desktop. You can see it's free, uh, open source, MIT license, and there is Source Tree, another one that I know a lot of people love this one as well. Uh, and this one goes really well with Bitbucket, who both of those are made by Atlassian, um, a company, and they work really well together. They're, they're, they're a pair, just like how GitHub Desktop and GitHub are kind of like a pair. So yeah, if you if, if GitHub Desktop and GitHub don't appeal to you for any reason, or you want to just check out an alternative, I would highly recommend those two as well. So Bitbucket, the, um, the host for your uh, project online, 
uh, and source tree as the interface that you can download. But there are other ones. So I think uh, Git Kraken is another one that looks really cool. I think this is my favorite looking one. Um, yeah, it just looks beautiful. This one is paid though. It might be a little bit harder to use because it has more functionality. So it has like that staging step, for example, um, compared to GitHub desktop. But yeah, really nice. A lot of people love that one. Uh, yeah, and you can see some others here. Feel free to have a look. Yeah, and the, and the same goes for uh, GitHub. You know, you can have a look at GitHub alternatives. Um, there's like GitLab, Bitbucket, SourceForge, I think are some of the biggest ones. And yeah, absolutely feel free to check those out too. You don't need to use GitHub. The reason I use GitHub and GitHub Desktop is pretty arbitrary. Like it's it's because I think that it's easy. The rest of my team uses it. And it's important uh, that we're able to pretty easily like teach this to other people. If someone comes onto the team and someone has to, they have to be onboarded. Someone has to go through this process of explaining how GitHub works. And we've found that this one is really, really easy. Like you can get this set up really quickly. Uh, likewise, like GitHub itself is the most popular uh, repository host. It didn't used to be free for group projects. I think I think only public repositories used to be free, but you can have private ones as well, even with Teams. And the different hosts have different like features and functionality that they'll offer you. Like if if you can, um, I think viewing the history can be different. Support that they give you for your team stuff like that. But yeah, I just GitHub is ubiquitous and integrates well with GitHub Desktop. So that's that's why I use those ones. So that's about it for our introduction to Git and source control. I hope that contextualizes everything nicely. In the next video, we'll move on to downloading all of these tools, going through the setup, and then actually using them. So have a good one, and I will see you in the next video.